everybody welcome to blockbusting the podcast where we love to hate movies i'm your host jay light joining me today it's brendan cooney what's up thanks for having me on jay don't look up sucks (laughs) i'm very happy to have you on (laughs) getting it right out of the way talking we're talking about don't look up today folks and don't look up is uh a movie that's currently on netflix it has been nominated for a bunch of awards already uh, including top 10 of the year by National Board of Review and American Film Institute, uh, Best Picture in the Musical or Comedy category at the Golden Globes, got six nominations at the Critics' Choice Awards. Also currently the second most watched film on Netflix within its first month of release. Um, now, <clears throat> this movie sparked a lot of discussion. Um, it's Adam McKay being satirical and wacky again. And, uh, and it's, 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 uh, it, there's a lot, I don't even know where to start with this. So really yeah. I can't start with my own thing. I got to start with you, Brendan. Where, where do you come in with this movie? Like, where did you watch it the first time? What was your experience like? Why do you hate this? Okay. So, uh, fully like full truth. I did watch it on my iPhone in an airplane. I was coming back from, uh, I, I was coming back from home and I was worried about, Getting Omicron, I was stressed out, and I was watching the movie. So not the best way to watch, you know. Like oh, a movie. certainly not. Yeah, definitely and, uh, not a good thing to watch a movie about uh, disaster striking the earth while you're de- dealing with COVID fears of your own. Yeah, I mean, and I did. So that's not the best way to watch a movie, obviously, on your iPhone. But I watched it again on my TV, which is how most people are watching it, right? Because it's a Netflix movie, um, and I had like this the same reaction. When I watched it, I was like thinking that it was, I thought it was terrible. And then I'm in a group chat with a bunch of people. And one of the guys who's very like left leaning messaged us. He was like, Hey, have you guys seen Don't Look Up? It's amazing. And then another guy who's sort of apolitical was like, It's the worst movie I've ever seen. And then we we're going back and forth. We we're like, What's up to Sean? Whether Sean likes it or not. That's what, that's what some guys said. And then Sean was like, He didn't really solve it for us because he was like, Yeah, the first part's funny, but then the rest of it's like, Who cares? So the group chat couldn't come to consensus, but I mean, I think it's terrible. You think it's terrible. I have seen it. I don't think it's terrible, but I do think it definitely misses. I think it's got way too much going on. Um, I think there's like an hour and a half of a really, really solid, great movie in there, but there's way too much muddling it up. Um, But why do you think this, like, out of, you know... All of this, it, there's this movie's very polarizing, is the take mm-hmm. I get from it. Like, in general, everybody seems to either really, really like it or despise it. So, the reason I don't like it, I think the main reason is because it's a message movie, and most message movies are bad because movies, just like doing stand up or jokes, is about the joke or like the, the movie itself. It should be entertaining, that should be the goal. Mm-hmm. And this movie is just like a global warming is real, which it is obviously real, but the movie itself is boring. The way my friend defended it was saying that it's like a farce, but farce, farce to me is like in the loop, this is the end, Doctor Strange Love, Idiocracy, those kind of movies where like they're funny. They right. have good jokes in it. Whereas this movie, there's like one or two jokes in the entire movie that land. Most of it is just like, as a famous person, isn't it crazy? Ariana Grande is playing herself. Like, mm-hmm. Timothy Chalamet's in it. Jennifer Gardner, or Gen- Jennifer, not Jennifer Gardner, Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence, Lawrence is like a punk rock scientist chick. And the the main thing, like the worst part of the whole movie is the opening scene where she's rapping Wu-Tang, which is so cringe. You know? Oh, yeah, that's right. That is a very cringy way to open the movie. It, it t- like... Because when you're watching that, like, for me, I'm pretty left. You know, I'm like, I've always voted Democrat. Um, so I'm watching it, and I've, like, I come at it from that point of view. But 
if you're anything other than that and you see that, you're like, okay, I know exactly what this movie's going to be. And then it's just that, ugh, like her rapping to Wu-Tang, it, it just, I automatically know this is, this is the type of movie this is going to be. Out right. of touch, one percenter Adam McKay making another bad movie because Vice sucked too. Vice was so boring. You know, like, what is this? It's been so hard for me to watch Adam McKay movies after The Big Short. I feel like he set the bar so high with The Big Short. And, you know, I think if I, I, I watched Vice in theaters when it came out and I was, uh, you know, I was back visiting my family in Texas at the time. And Vice was the kind of movie, it was very fun to watch in theaters with a bunch of people who were super Republican when I'm sitting here as like probably one of the only people on the left in the audience, just like getting up from my movie, uh, getting up from my chair at the end of the movie and people being like, well, well, what the fuck was that supposed to be? I can't believe we sat through that whole thing. Like his people, <laughs> cause people get tricked into it. And I feel like that's kind of what Adam McKay was hoping was going to happen with this movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like people are going to see it. I mean, literally I just read about this. Um, he did an interview in IndieWire talking about the backlash to him tweeting, uh, loving the heated debate on our movie, but if you don't have at least a small ember of anxiety about the climate collapsing or the U.S. teetering, I'm not sure, don't look up, makes any sense. Which is a ridiculous thing to say about your movie, is that your audience is too dumb to understand why it's supposed to be satirical. I think he's too dumb to get how to make this like a good movie, you know? Like that... (laughs) Everybody, anybody watching it understands it. I can't imagine someone's like, unless they're like a very lowbrow person, and they, because I guess that is some people are just they're not checked in, that they go to watch. They're just like, oh, it's a movie, I'll watch it. And then I guess. by the end, but then they they gotta realize by the end what's going on. It's not. I don't think it's a movie. If you're like super duper political, maybe it offends you. If you're one of these crazy conservatives, but. The, what offends me about the movie is just that it's it's bad, you know. It's got too much shit that sucks in it. I think it's cl- it's very clear too when you he- when you watch Adam McKay talk about stuff. And this is um, in that interview, he says this thing: um, "My sweaty fever dream of a situation about somebody watching the movie would be Joe Manchin sitting down with his family, thinking, let 'Let's watch this. It's supposed to be a comedy. My kids like Leonardo DiCaprio. My grandkids like Ariana Grande.'" And then that ending comes, and my dream would be for that, for one second, Joe Manchin feels in his bones. For even a second. So clearly, he's got this movie in mind as, like, a thing that he's going to do that's going to, like, go out there and change people's minds. But the problem is, in my mind, that this movie is kind of the... Uh, it's it, Because it's a message movie, it's kind of like the film equivalent of a joke where the whole goal is to just get people to clap where you're just trying to get some clap. Yeah. It's clapter. It's a clapter movie. It's a clapter movie. It shows how out of touch he is. Cause like what grandfather is like, knows who Ariana Grande is and what grandfather is, let's go watch a Netflix movie. Would your, my grandfather has passed away, but would your grandfather be like, Oh good. Jay's here. Let's watch a movie on Netflix. I mean, oh, my grandfathers right. are also passed away, but they right. neither my grandmothers don't know who Ariana Grande is. Right, and even even Ariana Grande, I feel like that's out of touch too because she's not even like the new person. They yeah, have get Olivia playing, Rodrigo or something. Yeah, they have her playing herself or whatever. I don't know what the that whole like scene where she's in the news thing with uh, like her breakup with Kid Cudi. That's so dumb. Like that shit. That's why you need, and I'm totally talking out of my ass here, but that's why you need these like ruthless producers like Scott Rudin. Like he's a terrible person, but you need somebody like that to be like, nope, cutting that scene. That's bad. Throw it mm-hmm. out, or else you're gonna get movies like this from woke people that just, oh, let's leave in the scene with this person because they checked this box. Isn't this great? We just did this, but nobody's laughing unless they're like stupid. Right. I think. I mean, there's a big, big problem with this movie, in my mind, is certainly too long. There's certainly too much going on in it. There's no need for this movie to be over two and a half hours long. Um, there's there's really no need for this movie to be even more than two hours long. I can't believe that they made a movie that's supposed to be a satire that does not have the like the joke density that it could have had. 
also. Yeah, definitely. They're so, they're sparse. They're few and far between. There's clearly a lot of stuff where it's like situationally supposed to be funny. Um, characters acting in certain ways. But like, even if you compare it to Dr. Strangelove, which I know this movie's gotten a lot of comparison to, Dr. Strangelove had tons of jokes. Yes. Dr. Strangelove was written and performed in a way where there was not only the visual jokes of, you know, stuff like guy wild around. can't control his hand or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah all that, that stuff. Great. Yeah. But, but there's... There's there's written comedy throughout the whole thing instead of just people going on rants that you're supposed to be like, huh, I yeah, I, he yeah. did it. There's like okay, there's one scene in Don't Get uh, Don't Look Up. It's where it's at the beginning with the Facebook guy, mm-hmm. and he's like doing his spiel, and the little girl's like, "Can I say something?" And he says, "No." That was funny, and that yes. was like the one thing that was good. Doctor Strange Love, like. There's situ like you said, there's situational humor. Like what I remember I haven't watched it in a long time, but the scene where he he just tells the Russian prime minister or whatever, or you know, guy that he's talking to that they're gonna nuke their country by accident. Right. And the Russian guy gets mad. And instead of like a normal situation, that wouldn't happen, but like the guy's like, Dimitri, please, you're getting angry at me. Like uh-huh. that's funny. That's or, funny. Or the dude who's gone crazy and he's talking about how he, cleanliness and stuff like that everything he says that's so like outrageous and ridiculous that it's funny whereas this shit don't look up they have like a scene where the uh, head astrology do- or astronomy guy is like i met sting and he farted what like that who's right. laughing at that or the scene where um the blonde uh emma emma thompson is talking to her whatever is that emma what is her name uh, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. I get those two. <laughs> Sorry, too many British time. ladies in this movie. Too many British people. So Kate Blanchett is talking to uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and she's like, "We haven't uh, talked about who we are with each other yet." And then they do this long exposition about how she dated a president, and and then he's like, "I, our dog died." That's not mm-hmm. funny. Honestly, just made it more funny the way I said it just then. Yeah. Like I don't know who's watching. Oh, good, another exposition scene about. DJ Cello. Who the fuck is DJ Cello? There's just there's a lot of like token shit in this because in the the one thing I'll say like don't look up. They have a female lead in it, right? Which is right. progress probably because these farce movies are always like very male driven. You know, you don't really see a lot of funny comedies about this kind of thing with women. Right. But instead, what they do is they give us this Jennifer Lawrence character who does nothing means nothing, is based on no one, has no personality, no character, nothing. And then the the black uh, astronomy guy, again, no, who is he? You don't even know his name. Totally like, underused. Yeah, it doesn't, he doesn't, his lines don't make any sense. He does that Sting story. For some reason he cares about DJ Cello. I remember DJ Cello's name, but I don't remember his character's name mm-hmm. because he's a non-character. But they clearly did, they clearly just had a woman and a black guy and then an Asian woman and then they don't use them or write anything for them because it's just, you know, they don't care. The main character is Leonardo DiCaprio. He sucks too, but that's all it is really. So that offended me. <laughs> this is, uh, you got, you're fired up about this movie. It's trash. It's just an atrocious <laughs> film. It's a, it's a, Anna McKay has lost touch with regular society and how to make movies and how to make people laugh because he's focused he thinks that he has to be some sort of like guy that tells it how it is and like he has to be responsible or whatever. But in reality, you make more of a difference if you make quality stuff. This is just a big piece of shit from a one percenter. It's just like, you remember Sarah Cooper, the, uh, the voiceover comedian? Oh, yeah, the comedian? dude who did the Trump, uh, yeah. the Trump voiceover TikTok Awful. stuff. Awful, just straight up terrible bullshit. Mm-hmm. And you get out-of-touch celebrities that are good. Like, I think Adam McKay is very talented. Same with, I think, Ben Stiller is talented. Ben Stiller is, like, retweeting Sarah Cooper, like, look at how funny this is. He's doing that because he's completely checked out. You know, he doesn't even probably go to the grocery store anymore. Somebody else does that for him. So sure, they don't, sure. These people, they just don't... You get to a point where you just don't get it anymore. Right. You're like, you, you, you get to a point Grande. where you can be on, like, whatever the Raya is for Instacart. Where it's only yeah. <laughs> dealing with celebrities. 
Yeah, these people are on what a, a version of Raya for every part of their life. <laughs> and then they're like, wait a minute. I don't, what do you mean my movie's bad? It's like, yeah, of course your movie's bad. You, a guy, somebody else is raising your kids. Right. <laughs> like you fucking... You don't. Want to, yeah. You're always in first class. Like you don't yeah. know what's going on. You, you know who you didn't get to focus group this movie? Your uh, household staff. You didn't get your nanny to watch this. You didn't get your landscaper Hell to no. watch this. No. You They're doing like Buzzfeed jokes. They're like making. There's like a Buzzfeed writer character. Does Buzzfeed even exist anymore? I, I mean, know. Buzzfeed's got a Pulitzer Prize, Brendan. I don't <laughs> know. Yeah. Here's all these people don't agree with me at all. You just read off all that. Like <laughs> it has 17 awards and all this. Fuck all those people. But I understand why people watch that. I wa- anybody watches anything, you put any movie out of Netflix, it's going to be like sure. you know, close to the top. People watch Netflix's Squid great. Game. And there's no reason that anybody should have watched Squid Game, but then it became a global phenomenon. Right. And rightly so. But that's the thing is like it just became – it's it's part of the Netflix churn, right? Like you get something on the front page of Netflix, of course people are going to watch it. Netflix auto plays it. Of course they're going to watch it. What yeah, else are exactly. they going to do? They didn't exactly. find. They couldn't find the remote in time, and now they're stuck watching the thing that they they just happened to be on the front page. Yeah, like Ted people Sarandos too. is ruining your life. I like all these actors. I'm not talking shit about that. Like I like Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill, Meryl Streep. They all do as good as they could do in a movie like this. Jennifer yes. Lawrence is good. You know, it's just not good. It's not a good film. I think. Yeah, there's a lot of. And I and I I actually do know we disagree about this, and I'm curious about your thoughts. So I think that the best part of this movie is Mark Rylance, the tech guy. I think his character is the best. Uh, but I know that you do not like it at all. Well, look, I'll say I think that he does a good job as that character. Uh-huh. But it's like a character that doesn't make sense really because they're not – he's just weird, you know. There's no like – Either there's no really if you're just weird, that's not really funny. Like the one line, it only worked for that like little girl line where he's like, "No, that made me laugh." But everything else is kind of just like, "Okay, yeah, he's like a weird autistic billionaire." But that doesn't exist. Like, who is that based on? I mean, that's based on to me. That's like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg. It's all sort of all of those guys, right? I guess, but are they the ones that are, like, behind global warming? Like, isn't that, like, more sort of, like, oil companies and, like, True. drilling That's, and mining and stuff? Like, isn't that who? Because, like, social media is – it has its other – there are reasons why that's bad. But Oh, yeah. Mark, does Mark Zuckerberg have spaceships that are, like, going to blow up stuff? Like, Bezos, I never even see him talk, but he he doesn't really talk like that. Zuckerberg. I, yeah, I've never seen Bezos talk before. Yeah, I actually haven't. Yeah, that see, that's a kind of an interest. That's an, a way the movie could have been interesting. There could have been a like the most rich, powerful guy. You don't even know what he's like. He might be totally normal, but like insane in some way. You don't, you know, like he. I don't know. It just seems like a stereotype, but not one that I understand for the purposes of the movie or what is spoofing. Like they're spoofing Musk, but. Musk doesn't really talk like that. Musk goes on Rogan. He's a goofball that smokes That's pot. That's true. And yeah, shit. he smokes pot. He was on SNL. Zuckerberg, like, how he's weird is like the snowboard, like, uh, not snowboarding, the thing where he was like surfing and he had all that, the, the, <laughs> the oh, fucking yeah. sunscreen when on they, his face. And they were playing the, uh, what was it, Proud to be an American or whatever the fuck it was in the background. That's hilarious. They should have spoofed that. Or if so, they had a thing where, like, because Zuckerberg tries to be normal, right? This dude, this Peter Ishwell character, he doesn't even try to like seem like he's normal. But Zuckerberg will put out videos like, have you seen the one where he's uh, he's like doing, he's cooking and he keeps saying that, yeah, we're smoking meats. We got smoked meats. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> he's that talking YouTube about shit? Sweet Baby Ray's. He's like, yeah, we got Sweet Baby Ray's. They're like, to say something that a human would say. That's like <laughs> what it sounds like. Someone's in the back is like, yeah, tell him you like, you know, Lay's potato chips. He's like, and we got... Lay's potato chips here. You Tell know, them you like sour thing. cream and onion. Yeah. That's your but favorite flavor. We just we just saw a film. We were watching a film together. I'm like, no, no, say movie. But the fuck, like, so this guy, he's not, I don't know who he's supposed to be. You know, because Bill, it should be like a Bill Gates or like a Warren Buffett or like Musk. But he doesn't really have much in common with any of those people. So I'm like, who is this dude? 
I guess I think I I think it works because I think he's sort of an amalgamation of all those guys. To yeah, me, I he's, think they're going for that. Yeah, I think he I think it works because he's like all of the things that we think about these guys who are these huge tech titans who also are now like, all right, I'm going to make a spaceship company to yeah. figure out how we can colonize Mars and whatever the fuck, right? And also these people are like super out of touch. They're just as out of, t- out of touch as Adam McKay is in all likelihood, right? But we have yeah. we don't have an Adam McKay analog character on this uh, in this movie. We have, oh, hey, it's the guy who's like sort of Mark Zuckerberg, but sort of Jeff Bezos, but sort of Elon Musk all at once. Bash. Bash yes. life bothers me. The title, like Bash life. That's not clever. It's just stupid. Bash life. Give me a break. <laughs> She's wearing a Michigan State sweatshirt when they go to visit. It's like the joke wasn't funny the first time. Oh, she didn't go to Ivy League. Great. So what? Like, it's, yeah. Unless somebody like if Adam McKay went to Michigan State, that's funny. But I need to know that for me to laugh. You know, I, that's true. I feel like we don't we don't get that at all. Um, we don't really have. There's so much info that we don't have that could have been stuff that would like elucidate the world of the movie a little bit more. I just feel like because it is so scattered because they go in all of these different directions and have all these different like spheres of influence that they're trying to exist in between all the political stuff and all the media stuff and all the big tech stuff. It just feels like there's too much happening for this movie to be as sharply focused of a satire as it could have been. Yeah, it's like a, it's not, I don't know if Adam McKay wrote it or it was like a writer's room, but it literally it sounds like when it comes out on the screen, you hear, and you, or at least I hear in my mind, like, oh, she should have a BuzzFeed boyfriend. Okay, yeah, God, that's great. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then he's like, he does an article like this. And then, okay, yeah, the there's a guy in the Supreme Court who's texting the president and she shows her bush, like, you know, because there's, it's just, they're going through Huffington Post, like, oh, can we spoof right. that? <laughs> but that's not how you write a film of, like, I mean, I don't know how to write it. All, all I've written is The Flappers Pilot, which you start in. Right. Check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube. Too, but, but, like, the, what I think you do is you start with, you know, like, the first shot and the character, and then you give them choices, and it's like a, of story whereas this is just like sort of commentary like a bunch of different commentaries on different pop stuff with hoping that you can get people i guess joe manchin who writes a movie for joe manchin that's the first problem yeah that's the biggest problem (laughs) what a dumb fucking joe manchin is not gonna watch this shit and who cares that guy's a fucking idiot i don't write movies for people i hate maybe that's the wrong I didn't write I didn't write flapper the flappers pilot for because I hate flappers. I wrote it to make people laugh, and that's right. why I did so great. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's because you do have a deep secret love for flappers, and that's why you wrote. There the you pilot. go. This is quite possible, you know. It's an homage, and we're gonna clip that, and we're gonna send that just to Barb and Dave, and then maybe we'll both get unbanned uh, <laughs> and can host in the Yuhu room again. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, it's so interesting to like. Think about how not out of touch, but like a few steps behind this movie is too. Cause it right. does feel the biggest problem that I had with it, besides the length and uh and the sort of you know, the the hodgepodge of what's going on, is that it feels almost like it's one of those movies that's made as a criticism, but the criticism is being made too late. And a lot of the choices that are made in the movie and by, you know, the, 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 the production side of the movie, that all feels a little bit too delayed, right? And I don't know if that's just because, like, our collective, uh, our collective, like, point of view is so chaotic and everything moves through the cycle so fast. But literally, I'm reading on the Wikipedia page, one of Jonah Hill's quotes about his inspiration. Jonah Hill plays the, the chief of staff, if you haven't watched the movie. He plays, he's a son of of the president, who's also the chief of staff of the president. Um, And he says, I thought, what about if Fire Festival was a person and that person had power in the White House? So, like, already you're making a Fire Festival reference. (laughs) It's 2022. Fire Festival was was three years ago, 
at the time this movie was being created and four years ago by the time it was finished and released. Like, yeah. how are you still going to use that? And BuzzFeed, too. How is BuzzFeed going to be your cultural standpoint of, like, this is the thing. This is where these these people are. Uh, this is who we're going to skewer. Like, it feels – it almost feels like a satire needs to be hyper current and so much more up to date or it needs to be a little bit further removed from the situation that it's actually satirizing for it to work as effectively as it does. That's a good, I think that's a great analysis, man. I totally agree. It does seem like, because they don't have some stuff that's going on now, really. Like, they don't really talk about crypto much. You feel like they'd be, like, talking about crypto or some yeah. like, jokes and this shit. How are nobody, how is nobody making crypto jokes in this movie? Yeah, I think there's maybe, like, one reference. But there's not, you know, they, you think there'd be more of that. The social media shit that they have is, like, old shit. I don't even see any TikToks on that shit. Yeah, and TikTok's huge, and they don't have anything on that. This is this movie is almost like because you know global warming shit is happening right now. So this is like making us. It's like making a farce. Wow, like I'm making a farce about Pearl Harbor in '42 or whatever. <laughs> right, place so in the wrong year. I mean, I don't remember when when Pearl Harbor was. But but, uh, but know, like it's stupid. Well, Doctor Strangelove came out in 1964. And the Cuban Missile Crisis happened in 1962. So, like, that was enough of a situation, I think, where it was so, where it was, like, far removed enough, but it also had, like, completed, you know? Like, sure, yeah, I guess we were still in the Cold War at that point, but, like, the, the, one of the major things that that film satirizes had happened. Yes. Right? Like, the problem now is that, like, we're satirizing something that's ongoing and d- difficult to pin down which is the the way people react to climate change. Yeah, I mean, I it's just like Forrest is I think Forrest is a tough kind of movie to make and if you do it well it can be really great. Like mm-hmm. in the loop same shit like the Iraq invasion already happened. It's a movie about the build up to the Iraq invasion, Iraq invasion. Right, and there's right. There's plenty of like hilarious like scenes in it that you know, if Forrest should have stuff that happened but like not the way it happened like a ridiculous version of it. Like the, I was telling Ben about how there's a scene with James Gandolfini as a general and he's talking to this woman who works in the White House and he's trying to like explain to her the troop numbers but he doesn't have anything because they're in some kid's room so he uses her like toy calculator phone thing to like show her the numbers, which is really funny. Mm-hmm. So like if they, ha- if they had scenes like that in this movie, it would be better. But instead of doing that, they can't really because... They're using amalgams of different things, not based on reality, and you got like they're just way tied up in this like shit from three years ago. Like mm-hmm. you said, like they're doing a movie that's a commentary on fucking uh, I don't know whatever was going on with like the Ar- Ariana Grande period of time when she right. was big in the news for dating whoever. Yeah, I mean, look at you know Colbert Report, right? One of the greatest satirical inventions of probably like modern comedy it worked so well because it was hyper current it was he was satirizing what was happening yes. in conservative media every day as that character and it worked because it was able to he was able to move and groove and jive with the times and keep it updated yeah it just doesn't like you have to be far enough removed from it in order for it to work. And it's just so, I don't know, man. It was, it, the more you talk about this movie, the more I'm like, huh, is this a good movie? Like, cause that's <laughs> what I rated it at. I rated it. It's like, it's good, but it's not great. It's got problems. It's but like, twisted, you know, like don't look up. That's so simple. I wish, mm-hmm. I wish it was like, obviously there's a little warming, but I mean, you have to be out of control, you know, not paying attention. And not really sure. Upset. But it's not like, do you know the scene where the Meryl Streep character is like, they want you to look up. That's what they, that's supposed to be funny, but really it's not funny. It's just like real hand-fisted. Like Nobody's out there going like, I'm not going to look up. You're right. I just don't get I don't know. I maybe, feel like, maybe yeah, it's too, like there's parts where it's too broad and satire to me is something that's a little bit more like, like I think you can, I think there's a place for broad comedy in a movie like this, but I think that it's got to be more overtly, like you can't, hit me with a hammer and say you're stabbing me right 
Like satire <laughs> feels like it's cutting, like it's a knife, and yes, broad comedy is kind of like a sledgehammer. Yes, exactly. That is like, this movie. It's it's just like it feels like the a kind of thing that you put together because you're on a deadline. You work for a show. The the show airs tomorrow, and you need to finish the sketch. So you're just like, fuck it. This is what we got. Go with it. That's mm-hmm. what this movie was. Like yeah. they're talking about global warming, which is going to destroy the earth. <laughs> That's what yes. The movie they made. They're like, all right, well, we get this is, how, this is what we did. Go with it. Hope now, there's one it. other part of the movie that I did. A, a, a joke in the movie that I did actually appreciate a lot and it felt it flew by so fast and I wish that it was like a topic that they had played a little bit more with um, which I know is a little bit hypocritical given how I'm saying I think the movie's too long but I feel like they could have gone more in this realm which is when they're doing the there's a montage there's many montages in this movie I think this montage the like the editing of the movie is actually another one of the high points and the way they use montages throughout is really good um there's a sequence in one of the montages where Chris Evans is this like movie star who is dressed the way that like they're dressing all of these guys uh, like Mark Wahlberg and and uh, and Matt Damon, where they have like a guy in a beard and he's wearing all brown. He's got a hat and his like child is part of a marginalized group. And Chris Evans is this guy and he's got a button on that says uh, it's got two arrows because you're supposed to look up and look down. And Chris Evans is like, well, I don't care which direction you look. It's all, you know, whatever bullshit line he says. Mm. And I think that's a great point, joke-wise, because it's like, oh, my God. The dumb Hollywood person thinking that they need to weigh in on something. (laughs) Yeah, no, I that is exactly how I feel. But I feel like Chris Evans is like a guy that does that. Like, I was telling Ben that, you know, these these celebrities they do one superhero movie and then they think that they have to tell you their opinion on everything like like this Chris, Chris Evans thinks that he's Captain America but he's just some actor that's true you know? like who cares what that guy thinks he is he's not particularly smart he's a guy that it that puts on a real tight suit and and says lines that somebody else wrote Right about you know the kids kids take in mainly right kids and comedians that we know that are still in the comic books and have comic book things on their walls and shit. That's who Chris Evans speaks to. So yes. I don't care what he thinks. But they need to stop talking and like uh, everybody that's not doing the work of like fixing these issues needs to shut up. I should shut up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whoever makes the Captain Planet reboot, they're going to be allowed to talk about it because Captain Planet is a superhero who fights climate change. Yeah, but I guess they probably will have to talk about it. Yeah, they'll have to talk to. about it, but don't let the person who's doing thinly veiled military propaganda, like Chris Evans and pretty much everybody else in the Marvel movies, they don't, we don't need to do that. Right. Yeah. I guess. You're, yeah. I never thought about that, but that is probably what those movies are. <laughs> oh yeah, I guarantee. There's. I mean. Any Michael Bay movie, most Marvel movies, there's a lot of military presence in there, right? There's, it's a secret government organization. Okay, yeah, that's just whatever version of the CIA is. Shield, right. sure. Anyway, that's a whole. I got a, I got a problem with Marvel movies, and it's not necessarily politically motivated. I just don't like those movies to begin with. But enough about that. I think we've talked to this movie to death. Um, and you have potentially changed my mind, but now I'm also not going to go back and rewatch the movie to like see if you did. <laughs> I kind of just exist in this stasis place where it's like, oh yeah, there are problems with this movie, and I don't need to go watch it again to confirm that there are these problems. You've been coonied. That's I got coonied. You got coonied, man. I got slapped with your raccoon titties right in my face. <laughs> Damn um, right. Uh, so people, of course, I think you mentioned this a couple times, but In the Loop is another great satire farce kind of movie that people should go watch. Um, This is the End is another great one that people should go watch. Doctor Strangelove, obviously, if you've never seen that. Those movies, I think, work in a way that this movie doesn't. So, like, what would you do if you, if we kick David Serrata off the project, we kick Adam McKay out of the writer's room... Brendan, how do you write Don't Look Up? Like, what does your version of this movie look like? What do you fix? What do you change? I go more, I raise the stakes. I make things like this movie. The stakes are obviously very high for like just the plot of the movie. The world's going to end. But the stakes are never high for any of the characters. 
None of them are ever threatened, and none of them are about to die. The scene where they put, like, hoods over their heads, that's supposed to be funny, but it's, like, stupid. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what his name? Jason, the character that Jonah Hill plays, he's like, I did that as a joke, you know? What they should do is, like, take a kind of, like, a in-the-loop approach and just kill off these people. Like, when they talk, that could have been a funny joke, like, Oh, yeah. They just kill them off. You know, like, anytime somebody's like, and they're like, what happened to, you know, Jennifer Lawrence? Oh, you know, she's dead because they killed her. <laughs> I don't know. They wouldn't say it like that. But, like, something like that. Or just go even further political, like, have fucking serious political conservative shit in there. Like, really shit on them. Like, mm -hmm. make, make jokes that you're not allowed to make. Call them names that are inappropriate <laughs> i don't want to get canceled on your on your podcast but like go way like get crazy get like i don't ever listen to come town but get come town on these people you know let's Do get yeah shit. we should have gotten the entire come town trio to be the writers for this movie my roommate listens to it so i catch it every once in a while but get like go fucking full like shitting on everybody saying stuff you're not supposed to say dirtbag left do that mm -hmm. see what that See, and get rid of the jargon. Nobody cares about, you know, the spectrometer reading or the Adam Nelson. They're just saying, like, the Adam Nelson thing said that this is about, like, they don't do that in Dr. Strangelove. And it's about nukes. It's just yeah. funny. There's no, like, oh, well, we need to make sure the reading again of the abba dabba doo doo. And they show, like, them with the machines and, well, you know, make the, the beginning is like, they're like, she's like making coffee and bread. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see that. There's so much to cut. From this movie that's another problem too those those things cut a lot cut a lot cut, cut out all the exposition about sting farting and and her fucking presidents don't need it don't need it don't, i don't even maybe you don't need the leonardo DiCaprio's wife either with his kids his kids are so old <laughs> his kids mm -hmm. are like he's like hey dad i'm just graduated from law school that doesn't make any sense what yeah <laughs> and, his, and his kid is depressed he's like i'm out of four Maybe they should have a scene where his kid kills himself. That might be kind of funny. Mm -hmm. they, just, they just cut to like Leonardo DiCaprio's son offing himself, and then they keep going out with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so bad. I think that there's like, I'm kind of on the same boat with you. I think that they've gone really, really hardcore, like as broad as you can make the, the, the things in this movie, and that would allow people to have a harder joke that is me. I think this movie needs to be meaner. I think yes. the yeah, problem yeah. is mm -hmm. like it's a lot of its characters are so close to the person who they're supposed to be, right? Like it's clear that the 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 politician at uh, in charge is a, a Trump analog, right? And that is you know sure there's corruption in all politics, but like it's clear that Meryl Streep is supposed to be like Lady Trump, yeah. and Jonah Hill is supposed to be Dude Ivanka. And <laughs> all of this stuff, you know, with the uh, with the with Kate Blanchett and uh, and Tyler Perry, they're basically when I, you know whatever version of like the Today Show people who get drunk on the air is right. Yeah. If all of those characters were hit, a, were 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 a little bit broader and not so close to reality, I feel like it would have made the movie work so much better. Like I'm, I don't know how we talked about this at all, but like. Idiocracy, right? Idiocracy, another great satire, another great farce. I think it's a great movie that, because of how insanely broad all of its characters and decisions are, it allows the movie to work better as a cultural commentary and a cultural criticism and be funny, which this movie just can't quite do. Like, going back to The Big Short, all of the, the comedy elements in The Big Short were so pitched up and so broad and insane that it worked because I think you have that contrasted with like some actually heart wrenching moments that really get to you. Like when they go and see all these, you know, empty abandoned houses in Florida and everything, right. these old abandoned developments that doesn't work unless you have the scenes where Margot Robbie's in a bathtub being like, all right, you dumb dumbs, this is how credit <laughs> default swaps work. Yeah, you fucking idiots. Yeah, show show all this. Show Don Junior, you know the Don Junior character cheating on his wife. Show mm -hmm. like 
like have a Hunter Biden character smoke a crack somewhere. Yes. Put Charlottesville in that shit. Get crazy. Like, go yes. Pull, put, put it all in. You know, have some riffs on, like, have conservative people, like, doing the stupid shit that they do, like taking pills and mm-hmm. crashing their car into someone else and then being like, a black guy did it. Or so, I don't know. Would it, put it all in there. Would it make it interesting. It's not right now. It's too close to it's too close to reality for it to be as interesting and wild as it could have been. Yeah, that's the that is a I agree with that takeaway for sure. And also, if you're really asking me what I like, you know, what I'd like to see in it, I obviously would like to see inside baseball, LA comedy stuff. Like make some flappers jokes, have some jokes about the comedy store in there, door guys. You know, that's what that's for me though only. Of course. <laughs> Who do you think Mystery Dan would play best in this movie? I mean, obviously, Mystery Dan should be the bash guy. <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. That was that didn't take long. He'd be perfect as that. That's a no brainer. Um, yeah. By the way, great transition, Brendan. If you guys don't know, you should go listen to uh, his Inside Baseball podcast, which is more than just Inside Baseball. There's a lot Thank of you. great comedy Thank in you. there. Um, but Raccoon Titty is available wherever you get podcasts. Yeah, I think Rec. Rack- I change is raccoon titties still. We're still calling it that, but I think you might have to search raccoon tweeties now. <laughs> yeah, if you search raccoon, you'll probably find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Look, no matter Brandon what. Cooney, raccoon, you'll get it. If you if you really want to listen to it, I'm sure you can find it. Um, it's a great it's a great podcast. I listen to it all the time, not just because it helps me, especially when I'm out like traveling. It helps me remember <laughs> what my friends in LA are like. <laughs> And what the scene is like, uh, but it's just very fun and entertaining. And uh, and Brendan and Gerardo have great, great conversations and great riffs. So go check that out, please. Besides your podcast, where can the listeners find you on the, online if they want to see what you got going on? My handle is Cooney or Die on everything: Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. My last name or Die, which is funny because Adam McKay. That's his Funny or Die. It's basically a riff on that I made years ago. So sorry for shitting on your movie. <laughs> Um, wh- when does this come out? This is going to be out Monday. Monday. So yeah, I have a, I have uh, risking Omicron. I have one show on the twenty eighth. So check out my social media for that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Raccoon Tweeties, Cooney or Die. Check it out. Go take a look at those listeners. If you like uh, the podcast, please consider subscribing on Patreon. Bonus episodes going out every week. I'm literally about to record one as soon as we finish here. So they are happening. I'm making them happen, people. Um, And you can also get access to my full film library if you subscribe. Um, And then check out my stuff at Diet J on Twitter and Instagram, jlightcomedy.com for show dates. I've got a a bunch coming up this month. I've got a show in Reno at the end of the month if you're listening out there. I don't know if I have any listeners in Reno. I have to check it out. I guess we'll find out. Um, And that's it. Brendan, thanks again. Ooh, thanks for having me, man. Awesome. This has been Blockbusting. Go see something good for a change. Okay.